Good morning, everybody. I'm Leslie Rogowski here for Spoilt Rotten Beads for a workshop for statement rings. Woohoo! Today's workshop, I'm going to show you step by step how to make these fabulous rings. And we're going to feature the Gleam Beads, which are just extraordinary. Um, they are subtle, shimmery, um, shiny, uh, like little pieces of marble. So, hi, hi, everybody. Um, I want to remind you that you can, uh, download everything, buy kits, watch this again. I just posted a uh, a link for you from Spoilt Rotten. Good morning, Juliet. Thanks again for hosting me. I guess this is my second workshop for you guys. Uh, from this kind of foggy but not very cold, it's getting spring, here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So I am the creative director for The Beadsmith, who brings you all these fabulous beads. I feel like I'm the fairy bead mother. Uh, to to get you guys involved in this. Welcome to my studio. <clears throat> you are looking at the tidiest part of it, by the way. So I'm going to reduce my face and show you what we have for you today. How's everybody? Good morning. Let's see who do we have. Rachel and Lynn. Leslie Pope. Leslie Pope is watching. She is my number one at the Beadsmith. She's the senior designer and fabulous designer herself. Her own business is Twisted Sister Beads. I'll give you a shout out for that. Um, so she's gonna watch and maybe try to answer some questions in the chat until they pull her away uh, at the Beadsmith. It's nine o'clock in the morning here. Hello, oh, somebody from New York. Rachel says you've had a cheesesteak. Cheese with, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, chicken cheesesteaks for me, just saying. I don't eat red meat. Okay, so I am showing you some of the Gleam beads. The Gleam finish is on four beads. I have no idea what happened to my super duos, but here we have Ginkgo's. This is the Gleam Red Glaze, and you can see they have this shine. They're, they're sort of translucent. Um, here's the white glaze in the Paisley Duos and the Copper Glaze Finish, which I, I truly love, black and gold and silver. Um, and so we have the Gleam in the Ginkgos, the Paisleys, the Gem Duos, and the Super Duos. Here are the rings that I've made that use all Gleam beads. So this one, what, what I've done and what I encourage you to do is because these are subtle and the colors are subtle, pick up the seed beads, eights and elevens in these rings to play off of the colors that you perceive in these rings. So you can see they're just, they're sparkly without being blinding. And they're so, so rich. Simple peyote band on the bottom. So, hello in Belfast. All right, I love the international part of this. So I'm gonna take my tray away. I use these little cardboard cafeteria trays to hold all my layers of work and we're gonna get started. I am going to follow the tutorial step by step to make sure that I am teaching you the way I wrote it because you know when you sit down and you you're beating and uh, it's kind of intuitive. Okay let's do this. So the first thing again I'm going to tell you is the beads you need are Ginkgo's, Gem Duo's, Paisley Duo's, Eights, 
and 11s. Now for my demo, I'm using, um, I'm not using the gleam beads only because they're harder to show up in the photograph and I want you to be able to see how the beads are fitting together. So I'm using beads that have a little more opacity to them than the gleam for this. But be reassured when you work with them, you'll be fine. You'll be fine using them. Make sure to test all the holes of your two hole beads before you start because you don't want to sew something in through the first hole and have it get be clogged on the second. It would look great as a pendant. I'm glancing back and forth at the chat window and uh, that it would absolutely be stunning as a pendant. I know you can't see this very well yet. Or even little button earrings. I think that would be really cool. So we make this ring in three parts. We're going to make the top with the gem duos and seed beads in the center. Now this I have backlit beads. They're very shiny. Then we make a middle section with ginkgos and seed beads. These are gleam beads in the ginkgos. They're the, the crystal red clays. And then we're gonna make the outer circle with paisleys and seed beads. And everything gets layered and attached and the band comes out from the bottom. All right, I think everybody can sort of picture how that goes. And the illustrations in the tutorial will take you through this. Um, I have a picture of the three layers in here so that you can be reminded that uh, that's how they go. All right, let's get started. The first thing you do, I like to work with fire line and size 12 needles. Even though I'm not using really tiny beads, passing through the beads over and over, it really helps you to... Um, to get through the beads and sometimes 11s can be a little small right all right this is my bead scoop that's there to get things out of the way for me easily so the first thing we're going to do is string a gem duo and an eight six times in a certain knot the tail to the working thread securely so you're gonna make a square knot and another half a hitch because fire line can slide and you're going to sew through all these beads again away from the knot you're going to weave your tail in first so you can see i'm just sewing through this again the tutorial tells you how much thread to cut when you're using this and you're only going to leave enough tail in this. Look at that, I got stuck. You're only going to leave enough tail on this to weave in at the end, to thread on a needle and weave in. So you're going to sew all the way around. Again, kind of firm up this ring. Come out of gem duo. Reverse direction and step up by sewing through the outer hole of the gem duo. Now here's a good example of why you need to check your bead holes because if I had done this, even this little bit of work, I had done this and reverse direction and tried to get through that hole and it was clogged, then I would have had to have cut this all apart and started again. So imagine if you're down the road and you have a lot done and you run into that. You don't want that to happen. All right, so this is my top layer. Now, let's see. Oh, I skipped a part. I apologize. See, I'm not following my tutorial. You don't step up yet. What we're going to do for the top layer is add seed beads. So coming out of a gem duo, let's start again. Hi, I'm Leslie Rakowski. <laughs> I'm going to pick up three 11s. Coming out of an eight. Boy, I am not, my brain is not functioning today. All right, start, sew your ring. I'm sorry, you guys. Sew your ring, come out of an eight, 
pick up three elevens, sew through the next eight. Not making excuses, but we had a major flood in our house this morning. And like three minutes before I went on the air, um, my poor husband is mopping up our downstairs bathroom and running out the door to try to get some stuff. Okay, three elevens from the eight through the eight. So through the next gem duo and eight, because we're only going to do three sets of this. Three elevens. And through the next eight. And through the next gem duo. And eight. Because we don't put a loop over those. Now we're going to pick up a third set of 11s, three 11s, and so through the eight and the next gem duo, and the next eight, and two of the three 11s from the first set we added. So you're coming out Give the camera a chance to focus. Coming out that third, that, that set of three, the middle 11. Now we're working on the part of the ring that's going to bring these all together in the middle. So coming out of the middle 11, I'm going to pick up an 8 and go through the middle 11 in the next group of 3. Pick up another 8, go through the middle 11 in the next group of 3. Pick up an 8 and go through the middle 11 in the third group of three and pull it together. Now run your thread through just the eighths this time. And what we're doing is we're snugging up that center section so it's gonna dome a little bit, give a little bit of height to this. And after you go through the eights, you're going to want run through the elevens and the eights. Those are those middle elevens that you sewed through. And that is really going to firm up this little domed center section. So you're going to do that all the way around through the 11 and the 8, through the 11 and the 8, and... through the 11 and the 8, the first one that you went through. So you have this really nice height. You can see how that's kind of sticking up there, domed a little bit. Okay. Now you're going to weave your thread through the beads. I'm going to make sure, looking at my tutorial, To make sure that we're coming out of this the right way. We're going to weave through from where we should be exiting an 11 now. We went through the 8 and 11. You're going to weave down through another 11 and the 8 in the original ring and one of the gem duos in the ring that you just did, the first ring. And now you're going to reverse direction. And you're going to set this aside for now. Now we're going to work on the middle section. 
Now you're going to start the same way you did initially by making a ring with the gem duas and the eights. And then what I did in the beginning, I had skipped that step. You're going to come out of gem dua reverse direction and go through an outer hole. Then you're going to string a gem duo through the uh, ginkgo through the tip, pick up an 11, an 8, and an 11, and go down through the wide end of the ginkgo. Sew through the next gem duo. And we're going to repeat that around. Let me do that once for you. So I'm coming out the outer hole of a gem duo. I'm going to pick up a ginkgo through the tip hole, the skinny hole. Pick up an 11, an 8, and an 11. And these kind of embellish the side of the ginkgo. Go back into the ginkgo through the wide end and through the next gem duo. And we're going to repeat this all the way around to put a ginkgo with the embellishment all the way around. Let me have this tool here. So here it is finished. And then you're going to weave through so that your thread is coming out of one of the eighths at the top of the ginkgo. All righty. So we have the top and the middle made. And now we're going to make the third section and set this aside. This is very simple. We're going to string eights and paisley duos. So you're going to put a stopper bead on with leaving just enough tail to weave in and then you're going to string a paisley from the convex, that's the wide belly side, tip end, an eight, a paisley duo, duo through the concave curved in tip side, and an eight. And you're going to do that until you have six sets, 12 paisley duos with eights in between, all through the tip side. Take off your stopper bead. And tie a nice secure square knot to make a ring. Let's get this out of the way. So make sure when you do this, sometimes the beads get out of place. You want to make sure that when you're making your knot, it's between an eight and a paisley duo. Just use your finger to hold that. You can straighten out the beads. I'll show you. I'm going to make a nice square knot, pull it snug. Now I have the ring. I've sewed the inside of this top component. You can thread your tail on a needle and weave it in. And then with your other working thread, you're going to sew through the whole ring again and really make this nice and firm. I'm not going to spend time to do that for you today, but you want to end up sewing through so that you're exiting on a convex side of a paisley, the round side. And the reason you do this is we're going to step up and by keeping your thread on that side, it doesn't show as much. If you did it on the concave side, there would be thread showing in the little indentation. So you're coming out of the Paisley Duo and then reversing direction. You're going to come out of the wide end of the Paisley Duo. Everybody good? I'm looking at everybody. Wendy, Charo, Joy, glad you could join us. Now we're going to sew eights in between all of the beads again, in between every one. Pick up an eight, sew through the wide end, 
and go all the way around and repeat that thread path nice and firm. Weave in your working thread to secure and trim and make sure your tail is also woven in. Secure and trim. And then you're going to have, and you can see my, my piece is not easily folded. It's nice and firm. This forms the bottom layer of your ring. So we're going to put that aside for now and we're going to attach the top section to the middle section. Now the middle section, once you're done making it, you're going to sew through this again to really firm that up too and end your thread. Weave your thread into secure and leave that out. Then you're going to take your top section, which still has your working thread attached, exiting from the top hole of the gem duo. Let's get this other stuff out of the way. Your mats look like this, right? There's stuff everywhere. Now I started my steps just to remind myself how I was going to do it. So I'm going to undo this. Pull my thread out. I felt a little knot. Okay. I'm going to show you how I thread my needle now, how I re-thread a needle, since I have a chance to do that. I'm trimming the end off my thread because I got a little knot in it, and it's going to make it harder to um, thread my needle. So this is not anything part of the tutorial, anything. All right, to thread your needle, my trick is to take a chain nose or a flat nose pliers, take the end of your fire line, and squash the end so that it's flat. Because the eye of your needle is a slot, so you want the thread to be able to fit through. And then I'm holding my thread so you can barely see it, like a poppy seed. It's really tiny. I'm going to bring the eye of the needle to the thread. And usually it goes right through. If there's only a little bit showing like that, I'm going to grab my pliers and pull. And there it is. And it almost always goes through the first time. So I've threaded my needle, and we're going to attach the top component to the middle component. Exiting the gem duo, I'm going to bring my needle. We, we want to position these so the gem duos are on top of the gem duos. Yes, face up, and the reason is because the back of a gem duo is flat. So you still want to have the flat side that's going to be the bottom of the ring. Even though you don't really see the gem duos in a ring, the bottom layer of them when you're sewing them, you want that domed side of the gem duo to be the face up against the bottom of the top section. So I have my thread, I'm going to, now we're going to sew up through the tip of a gem duo, out through the wide side, and we're going to sew through the three seed beads on the top. So if it goes through all at once, that's fine. If not, you're going to pull this to your ring. So the gem duo is on top of the gem duo and the threads coming through the ginkgo and then you're going to want to make sure that you sew through the three beads on top. So I sewed through the 11, the 8, and the 11. Now I'm going to sew in through the wide end of the ginkgo. Just the ginkgo. And I'm going to bring my top component over so that gem duo is there between the two ginkgos. And coming from this ginkgo, I'm going to sew through the gem duo. And I'm going to repeat this all the way around. Exiting the gem duo on the top component, I'm going to sew through the next ginkgo in the middle component. And pull it snug so the gem duos sit. 
through the three embellishment beads on top of the ginkgo, the 11, the 8, and the 11, and down through the wide end of the ginkgo. And then the next, the third gem duo in this top component. And you're going to do that all the way around. And then you can weave the thread in and it's going to look like this. Cool, right? Now the way this ring goes together is this is going to be on the bottom. If I'm going to show you, let's see this ring. So you can see that you have the paisleys on the bottom, the middle with the ginkgos, and the top with the gem duos, and they're layered. And the ring band, I find it's easier to make the ring band now than to try to attach the components and add it later. So we're going to add the ring band to the piece that we just put together, which has the top, the first and second layer, and we're going to add the ring band using Odd Count Peyote. Now I'm not going to show you how to do Odd Count Peyote right now, but what you're going to do is you're going to make the band separate before you attach it to this. And you're going to make it long enough to fit around your finger with a quarter inch. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in centimeters. I know we're so behind, not metric. Um, you're going to want it to fit around your finger with just a quarter inch in between where the ends fit. Quarter inch between the ends, because that's the space between where the ends are attached here. So if we look at, where's this one again? If we look at this, we can see that there's this space right in there in between the two ends of the bands where they fit on the ring. So you're going to make your odd count peyote and you're going to end the row with the little outies. Now I've attached one side already. I'm going to show you how to attach it now and you would do this to both sides. But this was sort of a time saver. I'm going to trim any of my ends. All right, we're going to thread the needle again, and I'll show you how to add that bead. You see how I did that just really fast? Poppy seed, eye of the needle to the thread, right through. So your thread should be coming out towards the inside from one of your three outie beads. Now, if you look at the underside of the ring, you want to look at the gem duo and the two eights here. You can see the pearly beads and the green gem duo. I'm going to sew in a circular motion through the eight, the gem duo and the eight, and then in to the other Audi bead on the other side of my band. So you're going around and around. And I'm going, once I go in here, I'm going to zigzag through what are the last two rows, technically, in peyote. Do it this way. So in through the eight. And it is, it, it, could be snug, depending on how snug you've sewn that first ring, but you're going to get your needle through the eight, the gem duo, and the eight. So I have this, let me cut this off, drive me crazy. Okay. Got that through. Now I'm going to sew in. Here's the end of the peyote band. I'm going to sew in to this all the way through, kind of a zigzag through that last row and the row before it. There we go. 
now. And you want to come out the other Audi bead. And pull that snug to the ring. Now we're going to go in that first Audi, that size eight that we did before, and through the gem duo. And through the eight, if you hear banging behind me, my cat is determined to get on camera this morning. Aren't they all? And you're going to repeat this going through again the end beads of the peyote band. And you're going to do it over and over and over until you cannot. Did I come out the last one? No. You want it, you're not going to knot this off. You're going to do this as many times as you can until you really can't get your needle through the beads anymore. You don't want to break your beads. You just want to keep doing this over and over. And then you can trim it off. Now you have your band attached. Now when you sew the other side like I did, you want to make sure that your band is not twisted. So you're going to sew one side on and then you're going to sew the other side on and make sure it's nice and even like this. So here's your component. Now we're going to attach this section to this section by threading the band through the third component. All right, and I'll thread this on here. I have another thread on there. And we're going to attach component. Oh, let me squash my ends, do my own trick here. Squash the thread end, thread the needle. There we go. Okay, now the ring is attached on the, the components are attached with a circular stitch around the eights that are at the top of the ginkgo beads in the middle component and in between the paisley duos in the last component. So I'm going, I'm coming out of my eight on the middle component, I'm going to sew through the eight in the paisley component, back through the eight, around and around. I'm going to do that twice and pull it nice and firm. And then I'm going to go through the eight in the paisley component and through the paisleys and the eights until I reach the next eight that lines up with the eight on the middle component. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Circular stitch around and around twice. And it makes this nice sort of undulation in the, the paisley section, really shows that off. And you're going to do that all the way around. Don't get your thread stuck. There we go. All the way around until you have your ring. Ta-da! The gleam beads, using exclusively the gleam beads, I really enjoyed the reflection of these. So, do we have any questions? I know I kind of slammed through that, didn't I? But it really is basic, and the tutorial has 
my illustrations, let's see if I can show you these. So when you get the tutorial, if you haven't already, you can see that everything is illustrated for you, including how you put the band on, how you attach it, where you attach it with the circular stitch, and how you then drop it through the paisley section and how you attach it through. So whether you learn visually or you learn just from text, or I suggest, and one of the reasons why I put my illustrations, and we do this at the Beadsmith, we find it very helpful to be able to have all the steps in front of you instead of breaking up the tutorial with a picture and a picture and a picture because in my mind, as a teacher and also as a student, it helps me to know where I'm going when I'm making something. It really helps me to, to grasp what each step is taking me into position for in order to do the next thing. So the steps in the tutorial are by figures, figure six, figure seven, figure eight. It explains everything. And... Those are my statement rings. I was so excited when Juliet wanted to, to use the gleam beads too. Like I said, these are really cool. They're, they're shimmery and shiny. Um, it's, it's a good alternative to something that will really be an eye catcher without being, say, a crystal. Sometimes you want something maybe that's just a little more subtle, very elegant. And uh, of course, make, you can make them to size. So believe me, you're gonna wanna have grand gestures. Bring my, my screen out here. Hello. Now besides using the gleam beads with other gleam beads, the gleam looks fabulous with especially, I think, a matte or polychrome or suede finished bead, which I did where you can see the ginkgos. So the gem duos and the paisley duos are gleam beads. Well, I have backlit beads too. And the matte finish really, really just makes the gleam bead shine when you do that. Um, thank you so much, those of you that are saying nice things about me as a teacher on the chat. I appreciate that. Is there anybody that has questions? Um, I wanna make sure that you know that you can, let's see if I can do this again. Nope, that's not it. Um, up at the very, very beginning of the chat window, um, and I didn't see if Juliet was helping me out and posting it throughout. But there's a link to where you can get your kits and you can see the video and you can watch this all again. Um, uh, a lot of people saying pennants and earrings. Yes, it would be so cool. I'm not really a button earring person, but check it, right? You know, or make it as a focal right there. It even matches what I'm wearing. <laughs> You're very welcome, Joy. I, I really enjoy doing this with Juliet and you guys across the pond, as they say. Um, I hope everybody is doing well and keeping safe. Um, no more questions? Any questions? You can certainly reach out to Juliet if you, once you have your kit, um, she can put you in touch with me. Uh, once a student, always a student. So I'm happy to answer any questions and to help you out. There you go. There is a link to the live tutorial and the patterns. So that's it. So almost quarter to 10 here on the East Coast of the States. And uh, I have to go and join my Zoom class. Thanks, Leslie Pope. My truly can't live without um, associate and fellow beater and very good friend um, at the Beadsmith. So as we say, the beads don't smith themselves. Stay safe. We're not through all this yet, but we're getting close. We love beads. I'm Leslie Rogowski, creative director for the Beadsmith here with Spoilt Rotten.
see you again. Bye.